Welcome to another RT PAT tip, that's your practical assessment task. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how we can add an object to our PAT. And this is particularly if you haven't planned for one, and how can we or how can we look for ways that we can add an object to your PAT in order to get those object marks? Now, when you are looking for a way to use an object in your PAT, you're trying to find a way where you've got lots of information that you're going to be manipulating or using that information in some way. In other words, you want to do some sort of calculations and you want to do some sort of display. That's normally a good candidate for um, an object and our database is probably the best place to start looking. Um, so let's say we've got this situation. Obviously, in, remember in your scenario, your theme will dictate what type of database you've got. So you're going to have to try to determine from your scenario how to use an object. But let's say we've got this database with inventory and I can see maybe I want to work out the VAT price of a particular item or I want to work out the total stock. There I can see I've got numbers. There's going to be calculations. I can display stuff. That's normally a good candidate for a for to convert or using the object. So I'm going to use the data coming from our database. Now remember, you don't need to use all the data, just the data that you want to use in, um, in some sort of way. So I'm going to come over here, just a reminder about how to do objects. So we're going to go File, New, and we're going to go File, New, Unit. And here we're going to save this. Save it. We'll save that particular unit that we've just got this unit to. We're going to save it as CLS, I'll call it Items underscore U. So save it like that. Look, oh, there we go. So CLS items underscore you. So yeah, we're going to uh, create an object. Now, just if you need help for your object, just go to your main unit and just go right to the top of the code. And yeah, you've got the basic layout and structure of an object. So there's going to be some sort of type, something like that. I'm literally going to copy that. That's going to come over here at the top under interface. And we're going to say, I'm going to create a T item. That is from a T object. It comes from a T object. Just remember, no semicolons afterwards. And then you're going to have your private and your public fields and methods. Okay, so there we go. So that's the setup. Now over here, you're going to put your variables technically, your attributes of what you want to use privately. And then here we're going to use some sort of methods like constructing that. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the, the methods quick, the quickly, the, the attributes. So I've just gone ahead and I've done that part. So I looked here at what I want. I don't care about the item ID. I want the name, the price, and the stock. And so I created three private attributes for the name, the price, and the stock. Okay, so there we go. And then you obviously need a constructor. So I made a constructor called create. And I gave whatever the fields are that I need. I need a string. I need a real and I need an integer so I can put them into there so I can use them. And remember these names I used different to those. Those are called my fields. So I put F in front and these are my just my variables, my input that's going into those fields. Um, and then I wanted to get the VAT price, I wanted to get the total inventory, and I wanted to get the string. You can do any other calculations you want, but you need at least two, at least to justify using an object technically. And so you press Control, Shift, C, and now we get to the place where we can write the code. And again, just a reminder about the constructor, we are taking what's uh, our field name, but I think it's item name, is equal to whatever is in, not self, the string name there so we take in these attributes or parameters we put them into the field and then we've got our field for our price and that's going to come from our price and then we're going to have our field from the stock that's coming from our stock so that's just creating our object uh, the fat price, obviously this is very simple stuff, but you can do more advanced stuff. Maybe you want to write, send back a particular code because a price is in a particular range for a sale or something like that. You can do some funky stuff here, but you need to be creative with that. Um, the price, that is, so we want the our price times about 15%, so 15 divided by 100. So that's not our price, sorry. we want the field price. And then the inventory result equals that's the stock times it by the price. I keep using all price times it by the F stock. This is how much we've got in total. And then the two string is how you want to display the information. So I'm going to make it a quick little way of displaying it. 
So I wanted to display my details in a particular way, like I've just made up a nice little format for it. Um, just remember, so when I, I'm displaying the name, the field, the price, the stock, and then I'm getting the VAT that we calculated, I'm getting the total inventory. And just reminded, obviously these are not string fields, which we need to return a string. So I need to convert those. So for example, if I'm going to convert stock, which is an integer, I need to go from int to string, but you'll notice that int to string doesn't work. If it doesn't work, then you need to go up to the top here, boom, 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 and you must remember to use sysutils. Another option would be if your database has some sort of date, you could work out the age. Let's just double check where we need to put that. So it's under the interface. Do, do, do. Under the interface, boom, boom, boom. There, that's where we're going to put it. Okay, so there we go. Um, so if I put sysutils there, then I can use int to string and float to string now over here. As I was saying, if you've got a date, that's also nice to work out age or do you like days till something. That's also a nice field. Um, if you're going to use date functions in your object, remember to use date utils at the top. Then you've got access to like date to string and so on. So I'm going to go and just fix this up quickly and then we'll go to the main program. So there we go. We've added the items, added the float to string, and done all the nicely laid out. Now I'm going to make sure you save and just test your code. Um, now I'm going to come over here to my main unit and I'm going to make sure that I use that CLS items underscore u. And normally you can declare an object globally. I'm going to, on my form here, when I display the details, I'm going to get the one that he selected from here. So I'm just going to go, okay. We are going to say, okay, we're going to declare it just for this button because it's just for displaying purposes. Normally you would want it globally. So I'm going to say, I want a O item, O because it's an object of type T item. Now it's recognizing T item because we added the CLS items as underscore the U. Now I've got access to all of those things. So I can say R item is equal to a T item dot create. Remember that's how you call the constructor. T item, sorry. T item. Oh, I'm not spelling very well. T R T R item. So let's have a look here. When I go dot create, there's my constructor that I created. So I'm going to get those fields from the database and then I'm going to use some of the methods. So I'm just going to do that ahead just to save time. So I went ahead and I've added the items from the database. We're going to fetch the item price of the record that we have selected. I've got the price, the name and the stock, and we put them into our object using our constructor. And then I can use those methods. The only one I really wanted to use was the two string so that I can display it in this rigid. I had to go, I tested it out already and I went back and it didn't display very nicely. So I went back and I edited um, my two string to look a little bit better. I used a few more hash 13s so to put stuff on a new line. So I did modify it a little bit. So it doesn't look exactly how we originally planned, but just so that it fits nicely. So now I'm using the object. It's calculating the VAT. It's co calculating the total inventory. This is from a previous uh, PAT example. So we put in the admin code and we want to display the details. So if I want to find the details of the chips, I'll display and there's the item details. Okay, I'm going to maybe take that out. But so there we can see the item, name of item, the price of the item. So there's, that's getting the VAT, pro the total VAT per item. Okay, so that's because it's all calculated and the total inventory is 5 times 12.99. So that's getting the details from that particular one. And if I do another item, maybe I want to find out about the cool drinks and I can display details now about the details about the cool drinks. So there, there's an example of using um, an object from the database. Uh, you can do the exact same thing and instead of going from the database, you could go from this particular aspect where you display details and you're getting values from the actual user and doing stuff with it and doing calculations. That's another way of finding a way to use a PAT. Um, that's one other option that you can do. Okay. Another example that you could use an OOP, this is particularly if you don't have uh, like, like data that has numbers, you can't do some sort of calculation. Maybe you want people to register to join uh, your your database um, or to join your, your function. And what you could do is you could ask them for the email address and their part, the stuff that they would normally register with. And so what you could do is you could then put those details into an object. Um, so I went to quickly create an object called CLS user. Um, and that just takes in the email and the password and you can have functions that, for example, um, obviously you create, you get your constructor and then you can check the password. You see that it's a, it meets the criteria. So it's like an error checking type of feature. So you can do your validation maybe in this part and check, uh, is the, uh, 
password more than so many characters does it have uh, or more than does it have a, a number in it does you can do all those checks and if it's all true you can send a boolean that can be quite a nice uh, quite a quite a complicated little algorithm that you put in there um, you could rate the password. I know sometimes when you go to a website, they rate how strong your password is. If it's weak in that, you could create some sort of way of checking different things to see if it's strong or very strong or weak. Um, you could check that the email address is a valid email address with regard to has it got an at symbol in it and does it have stuff after it and stuff like that. Um, and you could then have a display. So these are types of things that you could do for an object. Um, so those are options available if you don't have, for example, number fields. You can do some error checking. And you see, in this case, I'm not using it from the database. I'm just going to use it before we actually add them to the database. I'll just go and do all the checks and stuff like that. So then on this register button, we will then go and get the details. I will remember to add my new unit at the top, CLS user underscore you. And then at, the, at that particular button, when we register, I would do something like let's make an, a user object of type T user and we would then go and start going okay so now we can say O user is equal to um, T user dot create and I would put in the email address put in the password and then I would start going if the O user dot check password is true then or is false then you can start giving error messages and stuff like that. Um, stuff like that. So those are little tips and tricks you can do there. Another way that you could use an object um, is if you look at your text file. There's another way. If you've got a text file with lots of complicated stuff, um, you could obviously do the, the separation of the different components and then put each one in, as a field into an object. Maybe in this one you want to work out, maybe that's the age, and you want to work out the age of the person, um, or you want to do something with that number at the end. So you can do things like that as well. So that's another option. Um, again, it's always creating your object, go using your private fields, doing a constructor and some sort of functions and procedures that you want to do stuff. The two strings are normally a nice one, even if you just put it into a show message and then you just add your, your object at the top, boom, boom, boom. And then you declare your object wherever you are using it. In this case, we were using it there, for example, and then you go and use your methods that you created. Okay, so I hope this gives you an idea of what you're going to do um, for your for your pet. Um, if you haven't done your pet yet and you've still with the phase one and you're just looking for ideas, now's a good time to look at your object over here. This stuff over here, you need to put in your phase one. Remember, you need to say, like have an OOP diagram, a little class diagram where you can say what your attributes are. You could technically just screenshot this, but if you do that, I would recommend that you type in what the like descriptions here so say so what this is for what this is for and then I would type in yeah what is this going to do what is this going to do if you're going to screenshot this like it is for your class diagram then that's what I would do. or you can just use the normal class diagram format as well okay I hope this video has been useful for you for more IT tips go to our YouTube channel click on that subscribe button please tell your friends about it maybe we can help them too but go to the playlists go look for the IT tips playlist there are lots of resources there for your path there and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.